This video will be a continuation of our series on the spinal cord, and this video is going to discuss sensory or ascending pathways in general, and then separate videos will discuss each tract in particular. So here we have our spinal cord, and we can orient ourselves by finding our anterior gray commissure, which is this large area here on the anterior side, which gives us anterior posterior. We can also remember use our ventral root and our dorsal root to distinguish anterior from posterior. So when we look at our gray matter, our gray matter can be divided into three different areas of function. We have our posterior gray horn, we have our lateral gray horn, and our anterior gray horn. Remember our posterior gray horn is going to house somatic and visceral sensory nuclei. So we go somatic, visceral, and then visceral somatic. So our lateral gray horn houses visceral motor nuclei, and our anterior gray horn houses somatic motor nuclei. This is going to be important in our discussion of pathways, because if we're talking about an ascending pathway, we are going to bring information in through the dorsal root into our posterior gray horn. If we're talking about descending pathways, we're going to start in our motor nuclei, either our visceral or somatic motor nuclei, and that information is going to travel out over our ventral root. So in this video, we are going to be talking about sensory or ascending pathways. These pathways are going to include our posterior gray horn, but they also are going to include our columns of white matter. So this column on the posterior side is called our posterior white column, and it houses our posterior column pathway. Our lateral white column is going to house a portion of our spinocerebellar pathway and our spinothalamic pathway. And then we have our anterior white column, which houses a portion of our spinothalamic pathway. So let's take a generalized look at these ascending pathways. So if we're talking about sensory or ascending pathways, it's called ascending because we're taking sensory information and taking it up to the brain. So we are going to start in a sensory receptor, and here we have three different examples of sensory receptors. We have a free nerve ending in our skin, a muscle spindle which detects the stretching of a muscle, and a proprioceptive receptor. So we are going to begin with our first order neuron. Our first order neuron is going to detect a stimulus and then carry that information into the spinal cord. So our first order neuron is going to have dendrites in the periphery and then our cell body is going to be located in our dorsal root ganglion. So if we go back to our previous picture, we are going to have sensory information originate in the PNS. That information comes into the spinal cord and it goes over our dorsal root, which carries sensory information. And then our cell body is located in our dorsal root ganglion. We then send our axon into the posterior gray horn to synapse to a second order neuron. So let's take a look at our second order neuron. Our second order neuron's job is to carry sensory information up to the thalamus. 
So our second order neuron is going to synapse to our first order neuron in the posterior gray horn, which means our cell body is located in our posterior gray horn. So on our picture, we are going to start in our first order neuron and carry information into the spinal cord. Now depending on where this information is coming from, we may synapse in the spinal cord in our lower regions or we may take this information all the way up to our brain stem. In this picture that's where we see our second order neuron. So here is our second order neuron and it's cell body is in our posterior gray horn, then we carry information up to the thalamus where we meet our third order neuron. Our third order neuron is going to carry our sensory information to the proper location in the cerebrum. Generally, we call this area the somatosensory cortex. It is located in your postcentral gyrus of your brain in your parietal lobe. And remember, our somatosensory cortex has a map of our body on the brain. So if this information is coming from your hand, then that is going to target a specific location in your somatosensory cortex. If, however, that information is coming from your foot, then that is going to target a different area of your somatosensory cortex. Here we have a visual of that sensory homunculus. So I mentioned that the information may be coming from your hand. Well, your hand is going to take up quite a lot of room on your brain. This is because we have a lot of sensory receptors in the area of our hand where we don't have as many sensory receptors for the area of our hip. This accounts for the great distortion of our homunculus or our little man laying across our brain. That's what homunculus means. Homunculus means little man. And so the size of the area on our brain dedicated to a particular body part correlates to the number of sensory receptors located in that area. So we can see that we have lots going on with our somatic nervous system, okay? So all of this is related to our somatic nervous system and our skin. We have very little area dedicated to our um, organs, so we don't have a map of our organs on our brain. We only have a map of our skin. We've got a few things going on here which are highly related to the outside of your body, so your tongue, your pharynx is your throat. A lot of times they'll show an esophagus uh, because you can feel things in your esophagus and locate that area as your esophagus. But if you think about it, like, can you think about your gallbladder and know what your gallbladder is sensing at that moment? You can't. You can't even point to your gallbladder unless you have knowledge of where it is. But I want you to close your eyes and I want you to point to your big toe on your left foot. You know where that is. Well, that's because you have a map of your external body on your brain. So here again, when we talk about our ascending pathways, we are going to be have axons traveling in our white columns. And so we have our anterior white column, our lateral white column, and our posterior white column. So in further videos, we are going to take a look at these pathways in specific. If you have any questions, never hesitate to contact your instructor.